Good morning, everyone. So a lot of you guys have been asking me what the schedule is like to be a family medicine doctor. I know you guys hear me say it all the time that the work that you put in as a doctor is actually a lot more than the hours. So today I am working from 9.30 to 5 are my scheduled patients, but I'm going to show you all the extra work that doctors sometimes have to do. Um, yeah, I'm wiping your boogers on me. Ew! Boogers! Boogers! Ew! Boogers! Ew, boogies! Boogie monster! Can you go get tissue? Go get it! It's in there! This is in the bathroom! Go get it for mommy! Just a little bit. You got, it. you got it. Okay, you got it. There you go. Gotta wipe the booger. <laughs> no, we gotta wipe the booger. No. Yes. No. Anyways, um, it really depends on the day how busy it gets, but I'll show you some of the nuances that happens and hopefully inspire some of you to go into bad mood medicine. If not, I want to give you guys at least like a big overview of what to expect if you are interested in this career. I just want to put the information out there so you can make like the best informed decision for your career. No. I got you. I got it. I got it. Blow. 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 Thank you. I got it. I got it. All done. All done. Bye. 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 Oh, you don't want bye? Yeah. Aww. All right, so it is about 8.30, so it took me about an hour to prep my patient charts. Actually, I didn't really prep anything. I just reviewed the patients that I have today. During a full day, I will have about 14 patients. That is 30 minutes per patient. From 9.30 to 5, I'll have patients every 30 minutes. My particular institution has recently changed a rule where they want us to add at least one patient per half day. So at most, I will see 16 patients in a day. And what I do during chart prep is uh, I open the patient, I look at what they're here for, their past medical history, what medications they're taking, look over some of their vitals, and read over some of the past notes and doctor notes that they've been to. And that can take a lot of time, if, especially if they've been in the hospital for a really long time or they're a really complicated patient. It's a lot easier if they're a brand new patient and there's really nothing that I have in the computer. I'll have nothing to chart prep. So I'll have to do it once they come into the hospital or into the clinic. But most of the time, it's like when someone's transferring care, I have to go through basically all their history, every single medication they're taking, everything that's happened to them in the past, and their family history, social history, all that stuff. And so by the time that the patient comes in, I will already have like a general understanding of where they are in their health history so I can better give recommendations. Like I know it sounds crazy, but there is so much work that goes into before the patient even comes into my office. So please know that a good doctor will know a lot of your medical history already. Put them out? Yeah. Mm. Mm. So now I have to pack lunch and head to work soon. All right, guys. So it is 8.58. I have my lunch here. I have my water. We are, oh, got my AirPods. 
we are heading off to work now. Um, I like to get in at least 30 minutes before my patients get there because the inbox is like email on steroids. And so what you saw this morning, I didn't even really touch it because I was looking over all my patient charts. So patient charts alone took an hour and then now I'm gonna head to do the inbox. That's gonna take 30 minutes before I actually see my patient. So ah, let's go. So I just saw my first patient. I took the whole 30 minutes to see her because it was an annual wellness exam. Talked a lot about preventative stuff, answered all her questions, talked about diet and exercise, which I love. So it is about 10.37. I finished seeing my first two patients. I have completed writing their notes. I'm just waiting for my next patient who arrived at 10.30 to be checked in and then I will see them next. Um, I would say you have to be really um, quick and I wouldn't say quick but efficient in writing your notes in order to get out in time. So if I wasn't as efficient I would still be sitting here writing my notes and it would take me forever to write all 14 of them if I didn't go through everything, right? So learn how to be efficient, um, use dictation, like use dragon if you can, and uh, make dot phrases, uh, make templates, anything you can to quicken your, you know, writing soaps. <laughs> All right, I still have three charts that I need to finish. Um, so I'm gonna work on those and I'm not gonna eat lunch until I finish them because I rather have my notes done and spend some time with my family. Um, there has been a lot of confusion at the lab. Okay, and now I have to order stool cultures, but every time I order a stool culture, they tell me it's the wrong one. So you spend like another 10 minutes trying to find the right order within the system, and they can't tell you which order is the right one. They just tell you that it's the wrong one, so. So I just finished seeing all my patients and it is 5.43, but now I have a meeting that I have to stay for. <laughs> So also, I just noted that I'm done at 5.43. My last patient was at 5. I still have one, two, three, four, five notes that I have not finished yet. So I need to finish those before I go home.
All right, so it is currently 6.30. I just finished all my notes. The meeting is still going on. I just wanna say that this is not normal for me. Like it's not normal for me not to do procedures all day. It's not normal for me to have to um, go to meetings and stay this late. Usually I get home about six at the latest. Today was just a really busy day and um, had some complicated patients. And so it took a little bit longer and notes took a little bit longer and I took breaks to eat and listen to um, the meeting and stuff. So we have meetings about three times a year. I'm also on call today, which is not normal. Um, and so I'll talk to you guys more about on call and all that stuff and covering in boxes and stuff when I get home. Cause it's hot in here. I need to turn on the AC. And so it's gonna get really loud. <laughs> Ew, what's that? Mm. No, yucky, don't do that. Ew. <laughs> All right, everyone, I am home and the meeting is still going on, but now I can't sign back in, so I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully I don't miss much. Anyways, I am on call today. And so what that means is that I'm on call from 5 p.m. till 8 a.m. So anytime a patient calls in with a concern, I have to answer the call and I answer their questions. If they need medications or whatever, I recommend things like either go to the ER or wait till tomorrow to come into the clinic. And I do that approximately, I wanna say it's at least once a month. And then each Saturday, I work one Saturday every other month. So that's the, like the extra work that we do. Um, just to help with patient access. Not everybody could come in on a regular weekday to work and so we share the call with everybody. I was covering for another doctor today because she was on vacation. We all need our breaks. As you guys know, <laughs> we all need our breaks so I was covering her inbox as well. So I refilled any of the medications, respond to patient messages and things like that. And so by the time that I left, my personal inbox was empty and that's how I like to do it. Like empty everything, empty all the, the paperwork that I have to do and empty all the, the digital stuff. Oh, I have a headache. That's a butterfly. So other things that we have to do, once every two years. I hear you, honey. Can I, one second? Once every two years, I have to recertify for ACLS or BLS. So I did my online course the other day, which is not paid for, for my time. And then tomorrow is supposed to be my day off, but I'm going in to do the BLS class. So overall, today was a fairly long day. And as I said, this is not representative of what my particular schedule is like, but it can happen from time to time. And so for those people who don't write their notes fast or efficiently, can spend up to a lot of time every single day. Um, like for me, if I hadn't finished any of my notes, any of my 14 notes, actually I had 13 because I had one no-show, but if I hadn't finished any of my 13 notes, I probably would have stayed another two hours at clinic just trying to finish those. And so time really does add up if you're not efficient in doing those things. But th there's just so much that you have to write, like everything in your ear. <laughs> what you say? It's loud. It's loud. <laughs> It's loud, it's loud. So the note itself um, can take very long depending on how complicated a patient is. So if a patient comes in with mental health issues and there's lots of backstory and history of why this person has mental health issues of PTSD, of post-trauma and things like that, obviously you have to put that all into the chart and the decisions of why you're starting particular medications, what some of the medications done to them in the past and what they've taught 
tolerated, what they've not tolerated, what the, what's the plan going forward. So it just depends on the patient. Some patients are more complicated than others. If you have a kid with an ear infection, that's pretty straightforward. You just say what you find, you prescribe antibiotics and tell them to follow up. So that's a lot uh, a more quick note. So it just depends on the type of patient population that you see. So I hope this gave you a little understanding of what a life of a family medicine doc is. I should show you one of my better days, but just know that I do lots of procedures still. I do colposcopies, knee injections, trigger point injections. Um, so lots of other things that are really enjoyable. It's just the additional paperwork that sometimes you have to do. Uh, other doctors do it as well. Surgeons do it as well. OBGYNs do it as well. We are not immune in any specialty unless you get a scribe. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe and join this family and I'll see you guys next week.